Ahoy Bishikni! Today I thought we'd get into more of the Christmas spirit with the review of a very popular Czech film. I love doing these movie reviews. I've done a couple other ones if you're interested in watching them because when I'm watching a film again and again, I pick up all of the very interesting peculiarities of the Czech mentality and Czech culture especially with today's much requested review of the film Pelishki. Pelishki is a tragic comedy that was released in 1999, but it took place in the years 1967 to 68, a few months before the Warsaw Pact invasion. It's a bit of a screwball movie with lots of physical comedy, lighting hair on fire, silly antics, etc. But being a Czech film, it can never have more comedy than tragedy, which we definitely get in the second half of the film. Polishki is always mentioned as a Christmas movie, which is a little odd because it's only Christmas for the first 30 minutes of the movie. If you're a foreigner, this is a great movie to familiarize yourself with some of those Czech Christmas traditions, like reading your future in molten lead, or storing the Christmas dinner in the bathtub, or that baby Jesus brings the presents and decorates the tree while everyone else is in the next room drinking Slovitsa. But this is not just a movie that showcases Czech Christmas traditions. And if you're interested in hearing more about those, I've got a couple of videos for you to check out. The whole vibe, the whole gestalt of Polishki, I feel can be summed up in this one scene. No, wait, before we get to that scene, I want you to close your eyes and to slip back into your 15 year old self. I want you to remember that awkwardness, that angst. Did you feel like the people around you, your, your parents and your teachers, really understood you? Did you feel like they gave you the space to grow and express who you really were? No. That's the opposite of how you felt. At one point or another, you probably felt trapped and so alone and so misunderstood that not existing at all was a better alternative. Which brings me to our protagonist, Michal, and his first failed suicide attempt. Mikhail is that 15-year-old boy longing for the attention and affection of his upstairs neighbor, Yendrishka. Mikhail and Yendrishka's two families live in the same apartment building, and so Mikhail gets a front row seat into Yendrishka's budding relationship with the cool guy in class, the guy who lives in youth housing, whose parents inexplicably live in Washington, D.C. He's got the Levi's and he's got the Beatles boots and the haircut to match, and there's nothing Mikhail can do to compete. And while these teenagers definitely feel trapped in their circumstances, it's the adults, particularly their fathers, who play the role of self-centered, tantrum-throwing adolescents. Mikhail's dad, Shebek, has his immaturity on full display at Christmas when he accepts every challenge his brother throws at him, including a balancing act that ends with a thud and a headfirst submersion into a bathtub. So the father's job in a Czech household is to kill the Christmas carp, at least traditionally and Shebek's impotence is on full display in front of his brother and his mother when he admits to his wife that he cannot kill the Christmas carp as his father always had. Even an army officer and a father of two cannot quite be the adult that he's expected to be. Now, Shebek is very pro-communist, and he extols the virtues of socialism 
to any captive audience he can find, in this case, his family. As gifts, he gives them modern scientific wonders like plastic kitchen glasses. And plastic spoons, proudly produced in the socialist countries of Poland and Germany. And when those gifts turn out to not be the scientific marvels that he promised, he's mocked and humiliated in front of his own family. He just wants them to believe in the socialist cause like he does. And it's enraging when they don't. A much more somber Christmas is taking place in the apartment upstairs with a very different type of father. Kraus is serious, he's religious, seemingly devoid of merriment. He even takes the traditions reserved for children and turns it into a very serious anti-Bolshevik statement. See, he had been imprisoned by the Nazis back in World War II and he invokes this hardship anytime anything doesn't go his way. He values tradition and he's a true patriot of Czechoslovakia. It seems to his daughter Jindryška that he could never have possibly been an adolescent boy, but in many ways, he has the psyche and the temperament of an adolescent boy. He's self-centered and he lashes out cruelly at his wife and daughter when things don't go his way. He's easily provoked by Jindryška and he gets into screaming matches with her over things that are petty, like whether what they're eating for dinner are Italian gnocchi or traditional dumplings. For him, everything is about the honor of the First Republic, about Masaryk, about the heroism of the Czech pilots that flew with the Royal Air Force, and most importantly, ousting the Bolsheviks. And his family just doesn't seem to care, especially his daughter. He's a misunderstood martyr who's surrounded by imbeciles who don't take things as seriously as he does. And even though he cares about serious adult matters, his reactions are those of a petulant child. These two fathers, who are forced to live in the same building, are 100% ideologically opposed. And each of them think that they are 100% on the path of truth. And what's worse for these fathers is that not only are they not being taken seriously, but their children, Michal and Yendrishka, even laugh at them. And what could be worse to an adolescent than being laughed at? Yendrishka. Co by ti tvůj tatínek řekl, kdyby se s ním bavila takovýmhle tónem, co? No to jsme to dopracovali. Ty hajzle, jeden! In the third family dynamic, a mother interviews three suitors to have a spouse and a potential father for her son, and each of the three are immature and adolescent in their own ways, and in comparison, the young son actually seems like the grown-up in the household. 
When the three families are brought together because of a tragic death, they're forced to bury their, their political ideologies, which doesn't last very long. But now that we're clear on the plot, I want to go back to the scene that I feel really sums up Polishki. Mikhail is given a Christmas present by his father. When he opens the box, he sees the perfect pair of Beatles style boots that are worn in his mind by all Westerners. And even more, his Soviet loving father serenades him with an Elvis song. Articles with me, did you fall? Oh, now I think my heart is done, but I get you out of love and love my mind. And Mikhail runs to the beat of his dad right singing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And Mikhail's joy comes not only from these cool boots, but the idea that his father finally understands him. And even though his dad wants nothing to do with the capitalistic West, he's willing to respect his son's desires and tastes by buying him those boots. Except he didn't. It was all a brief fantasy and what was really in the box was some typical boots probably made by the cobbler down the road. And it's that disappointment when Mikhail realizes that his father is never going to understand him or respect him for being who he really is. That's the tragedy. That's the gestalt of Polishki. And that's the thing. We are always surrounded by family and friends and coworkers who don't get us, who don't understand who we really are. And sometimes the only thing to do is thank them for the shitty shoes. Because this is not an American film, it does not end with joy and resolution and father and son in some sort of compromise. It ends with the Warsaw Pact invasion. Czechs are not going to give you comedy without a hefty dose of tragedy. And in the end, we're back with our sullen teenager whose love interest has flown the coop. He's alone, lying next to the symbolically caged birds. And the Czechs and the Slovaks will be in that cage for the next 20 plus years after this movie takes place. So why does Polishki resonate? Why does every Czech ask me if I've seen it? Even the younger generation of Czechs who didn't have firsthand experience of the hope of the Prague Spring or the crushing disappointment that came with the 68 invasion. Here's where my foreigner perspective comes in. Perhaps Polishki resonates with the Czech audience because it represents the Czech character. The Czechs can sympathize with Mikhail's despair at not being appreciated by Yindrushka. He may not be a cool Westerner, but he's got stuff to offer. The Czechs relate to Shebek's frustration that the brilliance of their many scientific inventions are not known or not appreciated internationally. Way better than plastic spoons. I've got a whole video about Czech inventions if you want to check it out here. The Czechs, like Krauss, feel that their national heroes should be known and honored around the world, even if they're largely unknown outside their country of 10 million people. The Czechs know that they're special and unique and worthy of curiosity, even though they're often lumped in with other countries. The Czech people aren't Austrian, and they aren't German, and depending on who you ask, they might not be Bohemian or Moravian. Every time a foreigner thinks that we speak Russian here, or that the country is called Czechoslovakia, still, a Czech person dies a little inside. And when they're overlooked, it makes them feel like they're shining a light that no one bothers to see. Just like the teenagers and the adolescent men in Polishki, the Czechs just want to be understood and appreciated, as we all do. Like any good Christmas movie, you should definitely watch Polishki with all generations in your household. 
because it's something we have all felt at every age. Even though we're surrounded by people, we can feel alone, wishing for a change of circumstances that never comes, thinking that if we only had those cool Beatles boots or the girl who liked us or children who respected us or a government we could trust, that everything would be right in the world. And if anyone can tell you that that's never gonna happen, it's the checks. I hope you'll check out Polishki this Christmas. It's available online. You might need a VPN to watch it, but it's a very funny and tragic peephole into the Czech mentality. Be sure to check out some of those other videos that I mentioned before and have a veselé vanoce. Uvidíme se příští týden. Ahoj!